Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues joining us from across the world. My name is Gorni Maloney, and I am a senior nutrition advisor with UNICEF in our headquarters in New York. And I am with you here today in my capacity of chair of the Nutrition for Growth Outreach Working Group, a working group that has been established to support in the N4G uh, process. Um, so today I'm very excited to uh, facilitate this um, session where we're going to take you through a core resource that you will need in your preparations for Nutrition for Growth. Now the Nutrition for Growth Summit will be held in December on the 7th and the 8th um, of the month and prior to uh, the um, the, 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 the session, the Nutrition for Growth session, you will be working busy in your countries to work with your governments and your different constituencies, such as the civil society groups, the academia, the UN agencies to come together and identify the core um, uh, commitments that your country wants to make. So today's session is really all about to help you in that process. Now, before we start, we want to do some uh, housekeeping. So first of all, as you're registering online, please pop your name and the location you're calling in from uh, in the chat box so we can see who is online. Secondly, we will be having a, a fairly long Q&A session. So you can either start to populate your Q&A in the Q&A box, which you will find on the bottom of your screen as we start our sessions, or later, if time allows, we can also take some uh, questions from you uh, verbally too. In that case, if you do want to ask a question verbally, please make sure you raise your hand so that we can see who would like to raise their questions. We uh, have initially planned for the session for one hour. However, if the session does go over and we do need additional time to answer the questions that you have raised, we have flexibility to go to 90 minutes. So please do stay online because we are sure that this morning's event will, uh, and this afternoon for many of you, will bring about many, many questions. Now, this is the second in a series of webinars that we are putting out there to support you in your process of commitment making at country level. We held one earlier this morning for our colleagues in uh, the East Asia uh, region. Today, uh, our session now is um, for the English speaking colleagues uh, more around the Eastern and Southern Africa time zone. And then next Thursday, we also are repeating these two sessions in French and in Spanish. So the idea is we reach as many people as possible and have a, a useful consultation and then share some key resources with you, um, with you all in the process that you're going through at country level. Uh, the, so this webinar will focus to, to the most extent on the actual process of registration of commitments, on the types of information you will need when you register your commitments, and then it will unpack as well some tips for the financial commitments, which will be useful for your discussions at country level. We will also take the opportunity to share some key resources in the chat box uh, during, during the plenary uh, for other related resources on your discussion. So resources around universal, universal health coverage, commitments around breastfeeding commitments, around data-driven commitments, et cetera. So you can use it as a one-stop shop to pull together all the information you need in your journey. Uh, so next slide, please. So our, our structure of our session today is we will start uh, with a welcome message from our uh, Ambassador Ono, who is the Assistant Minister and the Director General and Ambassador for Global uh, Issues from the Japan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. As we all know, Nutrition for Growth is being hosted by the Japanese government. So he will welcome us and he will set the scene. Then we will go to our team from the Global Nutrition Report, who will talk through the, the process of the actual registration. So they will identify for you the steps that you need and the information that you need in order to register your commitments online. We'll have a specific presentation on financial commitments from the World Bank with some tips again on how to make those commitments as smart as possible. And then of course we'll have the main session which is really about hearing from you. What questions do you have? What clarifications do you need? And how can we all learn from each other on today's webinar and really get clarity on those questions that you may have on the process towards nutrition for growth. And finally, we're delighted that we'll have Gerda Verburg from uh, our UN Assistant Secretary General and Sun Coordinator to give us some motivational remarks as well as we close our session. 
So with that, I uh, would like to pass over and uh, we will now hear uh, for our opening remarks from Ambassador Ono. We seem to be needing to fix the volume. Jennifer, if we can get the volume, thank you. Thank you very much for your joining this regional webinar on the Tokyo Nutrition for Growth Summit 2021. At the turning point towards the World Health Assembly nutrition targets in 2025 and the Sustainable Development Goals in 2030, the Tokyo N4G comes at a critical time. Following the UN Food Systems Summit, the Tokyo N4G will welcome nutrition-related commitments including those linked to food, health, and social protection systems at the capstone moment in December 2021. The Tokyo N4G is a key opportunity to renew political momentum, mobilize additional funding, and accelerate action for ending all forms of malnutrition. I hope that the summit can help revitalize ownership of the nutrition agenda at the highest political level and be an occasion for renewed alignment between nutrition stakeholders at national level. This is an opportunity to bring nutrition stakeholders together to jointly review progress and bottlenecks on implementing national nutrition plans, as well as to identify areas where further action is needed. The Tokyo N4G Secretary have provided a comprehensive commitment guide for all stakeholders. It gives you concrete guidance of how to develop a commitment. This is guided by the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I hope this will be helpful to you to make your own commitment for better nutrition. Last but not least, I appreciate strong leadership of relevant partners and stakeholders, including donors, UN agencies, businesses, civil society, the Sun Movement, and the Global Nutrition Report to help other partners to make commitments so that nutrition for the growth be a truly successful event with maximum impact in order to improve global nutrition. I hope you all find this webinar productive and engaging. I look forward to welcoming to the Tokyo N4G with your ambitious commitments to fight all forms of malnutrition. Thank you very much. So moving on to our core session on the commitment process, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Renata Mika and Dimitria uh, Karayeo-Oru from the Global Nutrition R Report. So Renata, over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm the chair of the Independent Expert Group for the Global Nutrition Report. And today with my colleague, we will be presenting you the Nutrition Accountability Framework and how to register smart nutrition commitments. We also look forward to the Q&A session and to answer any questions you may have. I will go first by giving you an overview of the bigger picture and why it's so critical to ensure and commit to accountability, followed by an introduction to the Nutrition Accountability Framework and its purpose. Then my colleague, will cover how to register nutrition commitments in more detail. So before we go into the purpose of the Nutrition Accountability Framework, we need to remind ourselves of the global nutrition situation. Um, this is not 
a surprise to anyone. Uh, as you know, we're faced with a global nutrition crisis, which can no longer be ignored and has only been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. One in nine people are hungry and are undernourished and one in three adults are overweight or obese. As a result of the pandemic, malnutrition and related premature deaths are projected to increase. And we're also seeing the impacts of worsening climate change. So that highlights the need for equitable and sustainable food and health systems. One of the key challenges in addressing this nutrition crisis is the lack of accountability. Accountability is when stakeholders have to answer for their actions and to accept responsibility for them. So accountability ensures that any such actions and policies of stakeholders are implemented they meet the original stated objectives, and they also respond to the needs of the communities that they're aimed to benefit. So when we don't have accountability is one of the reasons why we aren't meeting any of the global nutrition targets. So to give you an example, a first challenge or a critical challenge is the formulation of the commitments, effectively how they are awarded. In past N4G summits, we have received commitments or statements uh, which were certainly made in good intent, but it was not possible to track or measure the impact, which means it was not possible to translate and transform them into measurable action. A second major challenge is the reporting burden on commitment makers. We understand that currently there is confusion and different various mechanisms in place that lead to more reporting burden, and we of course need to address that. So the nutrition accountability framework comes to address these challenges. First, by providing clear guidance as to how to formulate smart commitments. And second, and over time, we will engage with other reporting mechanisms to ensure that your reporting on commitments and action is as clear and as streamlined as possible. Stronger accountability is what, what will translate commitments into action and impact. And it's everyone's business, so hopefully by working on it together, we will have the opportunity to improve it. You may be asking yourself if this need for accountability is new. So of course it's not new. The Global Nutrition Report was born out of a commitment made in the first N4G Summit to drive forward global accountability for nutrition. But given it was born after the summit and after commitments were already made, it had not been possible at the time to introduce guidance and criteria ahead of the summit in order to help shape and formulate stronger commitments for nutrition. I would like to give credit to the government of Japan because this is the first time a government leader is stepping up and makes such requirements uh, possible. So government of Japan calls for strong commitments that will make an impact. And for the first time, we have an emphasis on the quality of the commitments as quantity alone is not enough for success. So of course we want many commitments to be made, but we also wish to ensure that these commitments are smart and will translate into the much needed impact. With the support from the government of Japan and the nutrition community, we have developed this framework for accountability driven by excellence, a framework that is inclusive of all groups of stakeholders across all geographies, to highlight success story, to reflect best practice, and provide an equal opportunity for all stakeholders to be recognized for their actions. So the GNR, through the work of this framework, comes to address the lack of comprehensive accountability for nutrition and to support the shared vision of tackling poor diets and malnutrition in all its forms. With your collaboration and engagement, which is critical, we wish to further build this framework that is independent, fair, and transparent, and that will provide you with the tools you need to make stronger nutrition commitments and translate them into impact. This means that we all need to work together, but given the global nutrition crisis, it's a much needed investment. So this is our opportunity to change things with both the year of action and the Nutrition for Growth Summit ahead of us, following, of course, the Food Systems Summit and the momentum that has been created, this is our opportunity our and your opportunity to make nutrition commitments and drive nutrition action forward. And for this to be a real turning point for nutrition, we need to ensure that these commitments are not simply promises and they translate into action. 
And hopefully through the work of the Nutrition Accountability Framework and the registration platform we have created, this will allow you to register and make strong nutrition commitments. So through that framework, you'll be able to record all new commitments or strengthen commitments on nutrition following clear, smart criteria. So we are inviting all stakeholders around the world to make smart commitments to tackle poor diets and malnutrition in all its forms. Everyone is strongly encouraged to use the framework to register and report on their nutrition commitments. And by everyone, we mean all possible stakeholders that are interested in tackling malnutrition in all its forms. Country governments, donors, including country governments and philanthropic organizations, civil society organizations from global NGOs, local charities and community groups, multilateral organizations such as the UN agencies and the World Bank, the private sector, including, of course, food and non-food businesses, academics and research institutions, as well as the general public or other advocacy groups. So how does this framework work in practice? Uh, we've put together this visual to help you show the full cycle of the nutrition accountability framework from developing a commitment to seeing impact and taking more action. So hopefully this framework over time will lead to more action on nutrition being taken. So starting from the upper left corner, first you develop your commitment. And this is why we're here today to help you formulate smart commitments. You can then register your commitment using the online platform. And Dimitra will speak about the resources available to you in a few minutes. Once you have registered your commitment, the GNR comes in to review how smart it is. We will follow a rigorous and transparent approach to review each commitment and work with you as needed to improve it. The objective is to fine tune the level of detail that you provide to us to enable monitoring and annual reporting on action taken. At this stage, I would like to uh, highlight that no commitment will be made public before the Tokyo Info-G Summit. Of course, it will be part of the compact, the outcome document of the summit, and then the GNR will release it online on the GNR website. Then on an annual basis, you will be required to report on your progress made towards the commitment, uh, again, using the same online platform. The GNR will then again review progress made, analyze and report on it. And of course, our objective is to celebrate success, identify gaps in action and share recommendations. You will then, of course, receive recognition for any action that is being taken, uh, learn and further strengthen existing commitments or make new commitments and hopefully take more action. So this is where we hope that this framework will allow this process of facilitating commitments, taking more action and leading to the much in needed impact that we all need to see to address poor diets and malnutrition in all its forms. So thank you for your attention so far. I will now hand over to my colleague, Dimitra, who will show you how to register a nutrition commitment using our online platform. Thank you and over to you, Dimitra. Uh, thank you, Renata. So good evening for me as well. My name is Dimitra Karagiorgu and I'm the Senior Nutrition Scientist supporting the, uh, the Nutrition Accountability Framework. So in the next few minutes, I will show you a short video about how to access the platform and register your commitment, what we mean by a smart nutrition commitment, and the resources that are available, available to you on the GNR website. Okay, so to start, this is a short version of a demonstration you can find on the GNR website to show you how to sign up, sign in, and register a commitment using the platform. So in order, in order to access the platform, you must first sign up for an account. From the Global Nutrition Report website, you need to go to the Nutrition Accountability Framework and then scroll until you see the two sign up and sign in buttons. Sign up is where you can create an account and sign in is where you register your commitment. The first step is to sign up for an account. So this is the sign up form, which asks details about the organization making the commitment and the contact details of an authorized representative of this organization. Once you have created an account, you may go back to the sign in button. This is where you can register commitments after signing up for an account. If you scroll down, you may download, download the commitment registration form 
so that you can view and prepare in advance the information needed for registering your commitment. You can then begin the survey. As mentioned, this is only a short snapshot and we encourage you to look at the full video online where we take you through the full form and show you how to fill it in by using an, an example. Okay, so what do we mean by smart commitment and how to make one? The meaning of its letter of this acronym is well known to all of you, but actually applying it to a nutrition commitment isn't as easy. So therefore, we developed a, a document called the Smartness of Nutrition Commitments to explain in detail what we mean by smart. We have identified and defined criteria and ingredients that we will use to assess whether a nutrition commitment meets the requirements to be considered as smart. And of course, we have developed the registration form in a way that we ensure this to the extent possible. So starting with a specific element, we want to know who is accountable for the commitment, who is making the commitment, the number and description of the measurable goals, the type of its goal, the action plan that will be followed to achieve its goal, as well as the geographical coverage and the target population. Then we need to know if the commitment is measurable. So we will look for the indicator that will be used to track progress. Of course, the baseline and target levels of this indicator, as well as any potential interim milestones, and the monitoring and evaluation plan for the indicator. To determine if the commitment is achievable, we need to know the total cost associated with the delivery of this commitment, and most importantly, the funding mechanism and how much of the total costs have been already secured. For the relevance, we will look if the commitment is aligned with global nutrition targets on maternal, infant, and young child nutrition, and the diet-related NCDs. Additional requirements can be checked, for example, for the Tokyo N4G Summit, in addition to smartness, commitment should align with national priorities and the N4G principles of engagement. We will also look at the thematic area of its commitment and whether it has been developed as a response to COVID-19. And finally, for the time-bound element, we want to know when the commitment starts and ends. So here you have an example of a commitment that is not smart. To tie this example with the smart elements that we just talked about, and starting with a specific element, we only know who is making the commitment in this example, so nothing about the goals of the action plan or the geographical coverage and population of this commitment. We have no indicators to consider this measurable. Uh, we have no information related to the cost of the commitment to see if this is achievable. We assume that this is relevant, but we don't have enough to assess. And we have no information about the commitment time period to, see, to say that this is a time-bound commitment. So this commitment looks like a commitment, but the information provided is very vague. So for example, malnutrition has many forms and we do not know what it's trying to achieve. We don't know the, the exact population that is targeted, if it's the entire population versus a specific population group. And more importantly, we don't have any means to to track the progress for this commitment because we don't have any indicator or the baseline and target levels for this indicator. On the other hand, here we have uh, a good example of a smart commitment. Uh, although this is just a summary and not all the details are there, we can already spot all smart elements. For example, we know who will be accountable for this commitment. Uh, we know the two measurable goals, which is to reduce the prevalence of obesity in adults and the reduce the prevalence of overweight in children under five years. It is measurable as we have the indicators for both goals with baseline and target levels. It is achievable. We have the total cost associated with the commitment and we know how much has been secured. And it is relevant as we know that the measurable goals are aligned with the global nutrition targets for overweight and obesity. And we also have a commitment period start and end date for both goals, so it is time bound. So here we have used an example in reducing overweight and obesity, but this is applicable, uh, of course, for any other commitment target in other forms of malnutrition, like stunting or wasting in children or any other type uh, of uh, commitment like financial or policy commitment. Okay, so on the website, you can read more about the nutrition accountability framework and its aims. Uh, the nutrition action classification system, which we developed to classify nutrition actions based on common principles and characteristics, how we define and measure the smartness of nutrition commitments, as I just outlined, and how we created and tested the registration form. You can also find additional guidance and help in the guide to the registration form, 
and the frequently asked questions that we update regularly based on feedback and questions we receive from all of you. And of course, a glossary of key terms. Uh, finally, to prepare yourself and be familiar with the information you will require to register, you can download the sign up and commitment registration forms to find out all the information you will need to complete the online forms. And we also have examples of completed com commitment registration forms for different types of commitments. Uh, okay, so this is it for me. Uh, this slide will be shared with you so you can have all the links and I will stay online then I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renata and Dimitra. I think that was an excellent overview of the process. And uh, colleagues from GNR, please also paste those links into the chat box so that those online can start downloading them straight away and, and familiarizing themselves. Now we're going to move on to uh, Kyoko Okamura from the World Bank, who's going to talk specifically about the financial commitments. Kyoko, over to you. Thank you, Granny. Hi, everyone. Um, Okay, so I'll talk uh, quickly about the financial commitments um, and the finance related policy commitments that can support the actions before and after the summit that are needed to make the financial commitments impactful. Um, on this slide, I'll skip the first two points as they are covered by the GNR team and I will just touch on the other two points. The one, the upcoming Tokyo Info G Summit aims to secure new and refreshed commitments, both policy and financial aspects. And secondly, the key focus of this summit's financial commitment will be more effective and sustainable financing for nutrition. In order to achieve the global nutrition targets by 2030, each of us really has to work towards realizing the mantra of more money for nutrition more nutrition outcomes for the money spent. Next one, please. So what does this mantra entail? The first half of the mantra is more money for nutrition. Um, given the you know, precariousness of the current moment and the dire need for sustainable financing for nutrition, not to be again uh, found left behind at the end of the SDG era, it is critical to leverage additional resources that will support this journey towards 2030. So what are the key elements? Domestic funding for nutrition is critical and rep represents the largest part of the total resource needs. And at the global level, nutrition financing also comes from various stakeholders such as bilateral and multilateral donors. And those need to be aligned behind country countries' nutrition priorities. Um, the existing global catalytic financing mechanisms that contribute to nutrition uh, objectives can be strengthened to help improve the nutrition financing landscape. We have GFF, Power of Nutrition, uh, Global Agriculture and Food Security Program, etc. And further, new mechanisms need to be explored to increase and further leverage domestic and donor financing. The other half of the mantra is to make nutrition financing more effective, efficient, and sustainable. This requires strong focus on post and 4 actions on analytics, system building, and capacity strengthening for nutrition financing, and making both financiers and the implementers accountable to the result through nutrition responsive public financial management. These are really big words. How do we move towards that vision? Many countries already have a costed national nutrition plan, and some countries have moved on to develop subnational plans that are based on subnational data and evidence. Once costed, the budget should be allocated most efficiently to maximize the impact, which analytical tools such as Optima Nutrition can help. Then the budget analysis that San Secretariat has been supporting um, can evaluate the, you know, the budget allocation. The, then the allocated budget needs to be spent efficiently and effectively. Several countries have conducted or are conducting analysis on budget execution through public expenditure review for multi-sectoral nutrition investments. Public expenditure reviews are useful, but quite heavy lifting. Um, although it can build a robust baseline, many countries have hard time repeating it periodically. So with this caveat, some countries like Indonesia, Pakistan, Rwanda 
have moved on to the next step of developing a nutrition expenditure tracking system within their existing financial management information system. Then um, these actions all build on strong program and financial data systems, which is a very important investment area. As we tend to fly blind without even knowing how much has actually been spent for nutrition in a country. Sustainability, we believe in financing, cannot be achieved without these system investments. So the formulation of M4G commitments should really take into account of what you really aim to achieve for the future of the country and what needs to be done to get there. This slide shows examples of financial commitments and finance related policy commitments that you can also find in the M4G commitment making guide. Um, financial commitments have to be smart and have to reflect their vision and actions rather than a ballpark empty kind of numeric number. This summit really expects more governments to be able to commit domestic resource allocations and partners to fully support that effort and all of us to be accountable, which requires ambitious enough financial commitments and mechanisms to help us maximize the use of resources and make ourselves accountable to the results. Thank you and over. Great, thank you so much, Kyoko. I think um, those slides have been great in setting the scene for what you need to think about as you uh, begin the process of registering your commitments. So there is a lot there, but what we want to do now is move into the Q&A session. Uh, we've seen a few questions come in, and while some of them have been answered online, I, would, I actually think they're relevant for the larger group. So Charlotte, perhaps, and Dimitra from uh, the GNR, could you answer the following points? Uh, the first one is, do commitments need to be made within a certain time period? And also, is there a closing date for registering commitments? We can start with those two. Over to you, Charlotte. Yes, sure. I'm, I'm going to respond uh, about the, the deadline because there is a, another uh, question about that. So um, there is a soft deadline uh, where stakeholders are encouraged to make and register their commitments before the 31st of October. And this is to facilitate the organization of the summit to enable us to have a first screen at the commitment and check uh, and make basic checks so that we can ensure that when we do the reporting for the summit, uh, we have something to give to the government of Japan. However, this is not closing the registration. You can register your commitment up until the 8th of December if you want your commitment to be counted within the year of action reporting. And I want to make clear that the nutrition accountability framework is not now open and goes beyond the summit. So for stakeholders who are not ready, uh, it may mean that you can register your commitment after. It means it will not be part of the year of action reporting. However, your commitment will still be taken into consideration and tracked over time. I will let uh, Dimitra respond uh, to the first question, if that's okay. The time period, Dimitra, would you like to uh, respond to that one, please? Uh, sorry, so can you repeat the, the question about the time period? Sure. Is, do we do commitment need to be made within a certain time period? I believe you answered that already <laughs> with uh, a soft actually, deadline. I think the question is about um, are we prescripting when the commitment needs to start and up until when? Or is it no, no. stakeholders? This is up to the stakeholders to decide. We're not uh, giving an instruction. We don't have any requirement about this. Okay, great. So I think that's clear. That soft deadline for the 31st of October, especially if you want feedback. And if you want to be included in the reporting, please, um, for, for the year of action, please do get them in sooner. But of course, you are free to submit when you are ready. Uh, it is up to the individual um, constituencies, which brings us to our next question. When we say register your commitment, Charlotte, who do we mean? Who is actually registering commitments? Over to you. 
Sure. So that is um, what um, Renata outlined. So everybody is the short answer to that can commit uh, and register a commitment. So we have grouped uh, the stakeholders within groups so that we can identify and make some form of analysis. So this is why we group stakeholders within donors, and that includes philanthropies and government donors. We have the group of the CSOs, uh, multi multilateral organization, private sector. However, anybody can do it. This is open even to the general public. Um, so anyone can register and, and make a commitment. Fantastic. So I think that's homework for all of us to get involved, as well as, of course, the main commitments being being the member states, the, the multilateral agencies, the civil society organizations. Um, an important question that's come up is that there are several advocacy initiatives ongoing this year. There was a the start of the year of action where a few um, constituencies made commitments. There was the UN Food System Summit again where many different partners made commitments some of which were nutrition related how is all of that going to be um, analyzed do you need to resubmit your commitments if you have already made a nutrition commitment in the un food system summit charlotte yes the answer is yes so the nutrition accountability framework is uh, developed in order to be able to um uh, receive all commitments made no matter which event uh, you want to link your commitment to. So if I take the example of uh, an organization who has made a commitment during the UN Food Systems Summit, they can still register their commitment with the Nutrition Accountability Framework. You can then link, and the, uh, the form allows that, you can link your commitment to both the Food Systems Summit and the Nutrition for Growth if you want to show that this is your commitment to all the events. Um, but yes, please register your commitment to the accountability framework because it will enable us then to track all the commitments made through the different uh, moments during the year of action. Thank you, uh, Charlotte. Now there's a question, how does all of this link to the scaling up nutrition movement? Anybody like to take that question, Charlotte? This is a question that I've never had. Um, I would say it differently. There are different initiatives around the world that are trying to put nutrition on top of the agenda. One of them is Nutrition for Growth Summits. Another one is Scaling Up Nutrition. All of that is about coordination. And don't quote me on that. This is my personal understanding of what is, uh, what is happening. But all of the different initiatives, organization working towards ending malnutrition come together and the scaling up nutrition movement is supportive of what is happening. I believe that um, uh, Gerda Verberg is going to speak uh, at, at the end of this event. And this, this is to show you that we have the support from different organization and, and uh, movements around it, including the scaling up nutrition movement. Great, thank you so much, Charlotte. And indeed, we can pose that question to, to her. But what's notable is obviously the Sun is facilitating these exact workshops, which is showing its commitment to the process that uh, the, the Sun movement is core to the success of N4G and in mobilizing different constituencies to come together and make smart, ambitious commitments to improve the nutrition situation for our population. Right, another question, and this will be for Kyoko. Is it possible to have nutrition accounts like we have health accounts to review health expenditures at the country level? So I think this relates to perhaps the examples you were giving from India of uh, nutrition expenditures. So Kyoko, over to you. Uh, you're, mu you're muted, Kyoko. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I think it would benefit if uh, the person who has posted this question could actually elaborate a bit more. Um, uh, you know, the, the health national health account is something that has been set up already. So um, it's happening in different countries. Uh, it's been used. But uh, that health accounts actually capture nutrition only minimally with one, you know, the nutrition disease, you know, category. So in nutrition goes across the different sectors and we can't capture all nutrition contributing you know the the expenditures etc through that national health accounts unfortunately 
that's why different countries are trying out, uh, you know, the different efforts and the financial management information reforms uh, have taken into account how, you know, the nutrition, you know, the spending can be actually made visible um, through different mechanisms, like doing this uh, public expenditure review, or uh, some other countries are um, actually, you know, putting uh, tagging. Uh, to nutrition expenditures that are happening in different, uh, um, you know, sectors, so that it can be collated, and the country can actually see how much has actually been spent in different sectors. So these are the efforts that are ongoing, and uh, uh, we are actually trying to put together, you know, the, those emerging initiatives from different countries as, as examples. And uh, we we will be planning to actually hold some learning, you know, the webinars as well. So more will come and I think this is an emerging area so we really have to work together and share information share examples and build it up. Thank you so much Kyoko and perhaps could we suggest to colleagues online who are interested that, that they could approach their World Bank colleagues at country level speak to their nutrition sector coordinator colleagues and get this topic on uh, up for discussion if it's something that they feel is relevant and appropriate for their country. Great. Uh, another question we've just received is, uh, and again, Charlotte, I think for yourself and Dimitra, maximum and minimum commitments per country question mark. Must they be in all thematic areas? And also, is it okay to have commitments from regional bodies such as the African Union and ECOWAS? Over to our GNR team. I can I can take this one. So no, we don't have a maximum or minimum number of commitments that can be submitted per country. Stakeholders can submit as many commitments as they uh, as they wish, uh, and in the thematic areas that they consider relevant for their commitments, it might be only one thematic area, it might be multiple. Uh, and then we accept, as Renata and Charlotte mentioned already, we accept commitments from uh, governments at all administrative levels. So that means a national level, regional level, or even local level. Everyone is uh, uh, encouraged to uh, register a commitment. And I add as well, um, Grenier, sorry, because um, when we're speaking about uh, the, the number of commitments per country, I think one thing that stakeholders might find interesting is to look at one commitment can have multiple goals. And, and the form enables you to have up to 10 goals. Uh, we haven't put more, but if you have more, please contact us and we can look at how it fits. So if you have an overarching commitment with different goals, don't hesitate to structure it this way. If you prefer to have different commitments separate because it's involving different stakeholders between uh, the country or the region, then you can decide to, to do it separately but look at the form and how the goals are structured in the form. Fantastic. Uh, and just to know colleagues, you will see that Harmony has been posting links for different documents and resources that you can all use in your discussions at country level that relate to the thematic areas. Um, there's a, a, a wealth of information out there, so please do check in on them and um, do also check the Nutrition for Growth website, the email is there for additional resources. Now we have a question on accountability, and I think this is probably going to be both for GNR and for uh, Kyoko, because it relates to financial issues. Accountability might be a little bit of a challenge. If the country promises to increase domestic resources for nutrition, in which it will be the Auditor General of the country concerned who will report. In many countries, that is the law. These Auditor General reports are sometimes a little difficult to, to access to obtain. So will the GNR have access to these reports and how do we ensure there is no double counting? So I'm gonna hand this over both to GNR and World Bank colleagues. Um, maybe I can start by saying that so far, the way that the GNR has worked was always on uh, self-declaration. So the reporting was always done through uh, the GNR uh, process. Now, I'm speaking with caution here because the reporting mechanisms and processes are not completely defined yet. We have defined the registration. We are working now on how we're going to process the commitments that uh, you are registering at the moment. 
But then the tracking element is something that the GNR is going to develop in the future, involving different stakeholders to make sure that we have a strong system that is leveraging existing mechanisms. So I think this is important to know. But at the moment, this is a self-reporting. So will we at some point have access to those reports? I do not know. I don't have the answer at this stage. The ambition is that the nutrition accountability framework, when we will work on tracking, will include an element of verification, which is something that was not included in previous tracking, but this is not determined at the moment. Kyoko, did you want to add? Um, just, uh, just, uh, just quickly, uh, if we put this issue of accountability in a bigger picture, um, I think uh, the, what GNR and tracking mechanism actually tries to do is to uh, build the capacity within the country rather than you know, checking and punishing, uh, build the capacity and system in the country so that uh, the, those, uh, the decision makers, financiers and implementers are all accountable, not only to the finance, not, on, not only to the programmatic um, you know, the elements, but all together as results, um, that is something that countries should keep in mind in uh, making this, uh, this, this commitment and uh, trying to build the system to, to be able to report back. Um, you, you know, ultimately, really what we are trying to achieve is the, is the results on the ground. So to support that, what mechanisms are needed is something that is really important for Great. So we've answered all the questions that have been posted so far. Would anybody like online, any of our participants like to make a comment or ask a question verbally? If you would like to, please raise your hands and we will, um, we will unmute you from our end and happily take your question. So please colleagues online, anybody who would like to ask a question. And while we're waiting for that, I'd also like to clarify all of you online, your governments should have received their invitation from the government of Japan, either through email or through a letter. It's very important that uh, the governments do respond officially to the government of Japan to let them know of their uh, interest and availability to participate in the event. So that's something I also would like to remind colleagues online, uh, given that we're two months out, that it would be great if responses can be facilitated for the planning uh, committee so that they're as ready as possible to have as many um, governments and partners and constituencies online. Now I see that Gerda Verbrook uh, has joined us. I'm delighted to introduce Gerda, who is our Assistant Secretary General and the Global Coordinator of the Sun Movement. And Gerda, you may have been listening in on some of the questions, the clarifications on the process of making commitments, and especially around some of the trickier financial ones. So we would like to welcome you to say some remarks. And also one of the questions we received earlier was, how does the Sun relate to nutrition for growth. So we did attempt to answer, but I'm sure you will do so much more eloquently. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and great to see so many uh, uh, participants in this, uh, in this meeting. And I like the uh, atmosphere of uh, bringing energy to the Nutrition for Growth Summit. And this energy is coming straight from all the work that has been done prior and during and after the, um, the, 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 sorry, the food system summit. Many, many, many of the Sun Movement member countries were able to not only make a high level commitment at the food system summit, but some of the countries also explained already a very concrete pathway. And um, we have heard time and again, how helpful and useful and active the Sun Movement at the country level, the Sun Movement mechanisms and networks at the country level have been throughout the whole uh, food systems dialogues building. Um, and we encourage each and every one, uh, we're following up uh, uh, with you to continue the food systems uh, dialogues in your countries, not about the what anymore, but on the how, how do we bring this into action? And there exactly is um, the bridge 
to COP26, because that is a summit in between, and N4G, where we are focusing on right now. You have heard a lot about uh, all, the, um, all the technique on how to make a commitment, how to make a smart commitment, what, what the Global Nutrition uh, Report will, uh, people will do, and thank you for this. But it is about the what will happen and the how do we uh, get there. And for that reason, the Sun Movement um, is looking at the N4G as the concrete commitment making from the side of nutrition. Nutrition um, uh, solely, no. Nutrition in full integration with the food systems, with biodiversity, with the climate uh, uh, issue, with bringing prosperity. But the nutrition needs to have a clear uh, place and space at the table. We are also looking at nutrition in universal health coverage, of course. Um, and in this universal health coverage, we want to see the focus on prevention. Just like we all need to focus on um, ending uh, each form of malnutrition by investing in uh, prevention over there. So I hope um, we have all learned a lot. This is today my second webinar on it. And I have to admit, I was not able to listen in during the whole uh, webinar uh, this afternoon. Uh, for me, afternoon, maybe for you, morning or uh, even evening. Um, but I know what has been presented uh, uh, to you. Don't uh, be frightened if you think, um, I don't think that I was able to catch and carry everything because everyone um, that has presented something, including the Sun Movement Networks and Secretariat, stand ready to support you in the concrete commitment uh, making. And just like we um, uh, have tried to do uh, uh, ahead of the Food Systems Summit, we would like to see each and every member of the Sun Movement, 64 member countries, but could it be also the four Indian states, to make a concrete and measurable commitments so that we ahead and beyond the N4G can also do the matchmaking uh, with those uh, members and partners who are going to make a financial commitment because that in the end uh, also has to happen. So um, um, I'm here to uh, encourage you Keep up the good spirit, though you're still in um, sometimes in troubled situation caused by COVID and other crisis situations. Don't give up. It's a great opportunity to uh, build the bridge from the Food System Summit, the National Pathways, um, the COP26, where um, food and nutrition also will play its role towards N4G and beyond. Proud to uh, have all these participants looking forward to very concrete commitments. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Fantastic, Erda, for those inspiring words. Thank you so much. And also for nicely linking all of these major global advocacy events that we're all here for a common goal. And it's ultimately it's to protect our populations from all form, forms of malnutrition and the role we all play in that. So a, a couple more questions have come in. Um, and one, I am going to ask Bala uh, Didiu to actually uh, come online. Um, so um, Jennifer, hopefully you, you can unmute Bala just to elaborate a little bit on that question. So we make sure we provide you with the answer you needed. And while we're doing that, uh, we have a question from Ali Ahmed Khan, who's asking about where the invitations went. So the information, we have um, we have received is that the it, for the most part the invitations would have gone to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from the Japanese embassy in your country. In some cases where that did not happen, there will be an email invitation to the National Sun Coordinator. If for some reason you are still unable to track down the invitation, please can you send an email to the uh, email address on the Nutrition for Growth website. And I would request that Harmony please paste that email address in the chat box. So if for some reason in your country you are unable to locate that location, please um, please uh, send an email to that email address and we will uh, follow up for you. In addition, there are colleagues at country level facilitating uh, from the UN side. You can also contact them and they can contact us at the outreach group and we will uh, make sure that the invitation is located and shared. So um, Bala, could you please raise your hand? 
uh, so that we can unmute you and you can ask your question. Oh, I, I see you here, Bella. Okay, it's BD, Jennifer. Great, yes. Please go ahead, Bala, and ask us your question. Okay, perhaps, I'm not sure we are managing to do that. So perhaps, Bala, if you could go in online and elaborate a little bit more on the question, if you feel we haven't provided you with the answer um, that uh, you, uh, you would like from our side. Um, moving on, uh, are there any final questions that anybody would like to ask? And it can be about anything relating to N4G and if possible, we can answer. So what I would uh, then like to say in summary, thank you so much for all our participants. Just to let you note that we will definitely be sharing the slides, the recording, and again, all of the links that we shared today, they will be shared with you all in the coming uh, days and weeks. We will also be repeating this webinar in French and in Spanish next Thursday. We're adjusting the time zones to the regions where those uh, languages dominate. So please do, if you prefer French or Spanish, please do join again and uh, come online and ask your questions. And please do reach out. <coughs> we are always available through uh, all of the email addresses that were shared on the chat box. This is a community that is here to support this process. We're all committed to the same cause. So let's all work together to uh, make Nutrition for Growth the most successful Nutrition for Growth yet. We're coming um, out of the pandemic and things are pretty rough on, on the nutrition side. So we need to really rally together and improve the situation to make sure that we are on track to achieve our SDGs. So thank you all very much. Please do check in on all the web links. Thank you to all our presenters. And we look forward uh, to seeing your commitments and hearing them being announced at the summit in December. Dear colleagues, goodbye and thank you. Thank you, Graham and all the others for organizing this. Well done, thank you.